Hey everybody, we're gonna learn the ins and outs of the GQ EMF 390. So the GQ EMF 390 is an intro consumer level EMF reader. Don't get any of those really cheap ones. They're not very accurate. These ones are better, they're better accurate. If you wanna get super accurate, you need to get into expensive, high level professional ones, but this one will be very helpful in identifying EMF and so you can be able to mitigate it and know that you are in a much safer level. So let's get started on how this one works because when you first get these things, it's like, I don't get it. How does this all work? And we'll go through some steps on this, but if you want some greater detail on how to read an EMF meter, check the links in the video description below because I have a whole video walkthrough on what are safe levels, what are not, but today we're gonna be setting, we're gonna be looking at everything inside the GQ EMF 390, how to navigate and get the most out of it because this guy, this guy can be a little technical, but I like it. I like being able to see everything on one screen. So to turn this thing on, what you'll notice is there's a power button, arrow, arrow, and then this return button. And each of these buttons, it can get a little confusing because they can do some different things, but we'll go through it really simple and just help you figure out how to do it. Basically, if you hold it down for just a little bit, you'll see your battery level. So right now I'm at 63%, but it didn't turn on. What's going on? Well, you have to hold it for three seconds. So we'll hold it for three seconds. One, 1,000, two, 1,000. There you go. Got the green light on, GQ EMF 390 coming at you. And what you'll see here is different levels that are coming through. Now, it's interesting, and you'll see this sometimes here where it says EMF, that is actually your magnetic frequencies. So sometimes you'll see it MF as magnetic frequencies. On here, it's EMF, the magnetic frequencies. And its range is in milligauss up here. And it tries to identify whatever's in this main area as what it might be. Oh, you've got Wi-Fi or an iPhone nearby. And over here you have your EF, electric frequency. And then over here you have your RF, radio frequency. These are the higher levels. And this radio frequency, what gets confusing is these will sometimes change. So right now we're in nanowatts over centimeters squared. So right now there's 498 nanowatts per centimeter squared, be sure to check the links below where you can see how to read and then start eliminating some EMF in your life. Drop those levels, live a little healthier. But basically, you just kind of have to work through and see what each one does. So if I hit the power button again, that gives you your main menu. And the up and the down buttons will take you through your menu. You can exit, about, battery, initial setup. That's if you want to erase it and go back to normal settings, save data. Now this one is interesting because you can actually let this record data and then export it so you can see how it fluctuates. EMF actually fluctuates quite a lot and the, and the meters try to give you an average. A lot of times they'll give you a peak, like the highest level, and then it averages between all the peaks and the valleys. And typically you kind of go off the average, but you pay attention to the peaks too because if that peak is super high, then that could be something to be concerned about. And then display options. So we'll look at display options. And to get inside of display options, you can push the power button. That's your enter. So you can do, have a backlight timer, so it times out, brightness, contrast, swivel display. So if you're getting annoyed by your display flipping at different times, then you can turn it off here. So if I push the power button, it's on normal, but if I push up and down, vertical, swivel, auto, normal. I don't really like the swivel because I find it's pretty sensitive when I'm moving, my, moving the EMF meter around. So I just leave it on normal. And did you see that it, when you leave it on the one you want, it will select it. You can push the power button to select it, but it's easier if you just go and leave it there and then let it come back after a few seconds because it will save it. So if you notice, I click it again, it's on normal. I leave it there, disappears, it saved the settings. Now I can go down and click exit or I can just hit this return button like that. Now I'm back to display options. Let's see what our user options are. Now, it does have an audible speaker that will beep when you're outside of safe levels. The problem is you wanna be able to set this up to what your safe levels are. If you don't know what your safe levels are, check out that video on how to read an EMF meter. You can change your volume, alarm settings. So let's take a look at that. Alarm type, EMF alarm. So like here, inside EMF alarm, your magnetic frequencies, you can come in here. And for me, I set it to go off when I'm in the danger zone. You could set it off to go off when you're outside of your sleeping comfort zone, just depends on how sensitive you are to EMF and how much you really want it beeping. I, I wanna know when I'm in a danger zone for sure, but then when it's in those other levels, I can just read it and then make adjustments. But you can do each of these for like electric frequency. You just push up and down, so right? When it's above 50 volts per meter, it will make a sound. Let me know that I'm outside of my range. And for radio frequency, once it's above 
one micro one microwatt per centimeter squared. It'll let me know. So this is a great one to go and set up right when you get it, because then you'll know for sure when you're in your in the danger zone. Stay away from danger zone. Okay. So then we'll go back. Hit this back button. You can go select the exit if you want, and then back, and then back again. So that's how you work your way through all the displays. And on here, you can see these arrows will actually do something, and so will this one. So this one will give you your main menu. This one rotates. So this one will rotate through these different, this is kind of your main display, and these are sub-displays where you can see them all. And so the one that beeps is the one in this main display. There you go. So we're back to magnetic field. Magnetic field. So what's nice is, you know, it tries to give you these things here. So, but don't take these at face value if that's normal. It might not be normal for you. But that's what this upper arrow does. The down arrow gives you some more options on this main screen. So you can actually change the units here on whatever this main one is. So if I don't want to do milligauss, I want to do micro tesla, then I can, once you hit this, you can use down or up. And then once it sits there for a few seconds, you can hit the this button too if you want. Then it's at micro tesla right there. Oops, I didn't want that. Go back. It's this down arrow. I want to go back to milligauss. And hit that like that. So now we know what each of these does, but what does this guy do? Well, this is interesting. This one can actually switch between your different types of displays. So this is the all-in-one mode. And the vertical mode is similar, but you still miss out on some information. So I don't recommend that one. And then table mode, let's take a look at that one. I haven't been able to find a lot of use for these different ones, but maybe, maybe you can. I'd love to hear how you use these different ones. That's the table mode. EMF graphs. This one can actually be kind of helpful to see kind of how it's peaking and going down like this. So there's your, e, there's your EMF, your magnetic fields, and your electric fields, but it doesn't give you any radio frequencies. But you can, within each of these, you can use this down arrow and switch between how it displays, just like we were on the main one. And in here, you can see that it has a tri-axis sensor for its magnetic field in milligauss. So it can kind of give these readings right here on the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. On the main screen, this is kind of helps you dig into which axis it's, axis it's coming at, but the main screen gives you uh, basically uh, an average. Come over here, RF browser. So this is where you can see your radio frequency. It shows you your peak over here. It shows you kind of how it's moving. You can see the, that it's just, kind of all over the place, it's a chaotic frequency. And then we'll go to RF spectrum, radio frequency spectrum. So now this is really interesting to see the peaks. Look at that. That's kind of a, this is a fun graph if you if you love details. But the, you see your base kind of noise from EMF and then you have all these, these spikes that come up. And then this is just different frequency. So there's 2.4 gigahertz, 2.5. Makes me wonder if we can switch this. And you can kind of move this along the spectrum. You can zoom. You can zoom in. I actually don't use this very much. But it's kind of cool that you can have that if you are a geek into those things, which geeks are cool. Nerds are cool too. I'm going to go back to all-in-one mode. Just leave it there because this is basically what I use. An example of how I used this one was on a Wi-Fi router. I was trying to actually turn off the Wi-Fi. So if you have an Xfinity Wi-Fi router, um, it actually has a separate Wi-Fi signal that is part of their Xfinity network. That's the free internet, separate from yours, but it comes from your base station. If you try to turn off your Wi-Fi, it won't work because it's got it's, it'll still be blasting out your free internet. And so it's really good to know when things are actually working and not sharing EMF with you. Now you have the full scoop on how to use a GQ EMF 390. I really like it. I think it's a great intro one. Be sure to um, here's a couple of tips. Be sure to hold it down here when you're doing your EMF readings because the sensors are up here and your hands, you know, we're, we're like a, you know, we conduct, we get static electricity on us and the closer we are to the sensors, it can throw things off a little bit. Let me know what your favorite EMF meter is and um, hopefully one day I'll have a whole suite of really nice professional ones and uh, have a great EMF safe family. We'll talk soon. Let's get started. You all ready for this? <laughs> Ready to turn off, you just hit the power button, hold it for three seconds. Power down. 
That's the GQ EMF 390.